I'm Johnny Smith. I'm Richard Porter. And this is Smith & Sniff, a podcast in which two friends talk about cars and many other things. I've just realised the... Uh, well, it might have even passed by the time this recording goes out. The London to Brian. Is it on again? Wait, Gosh. hang on. It was the weekend of bonfire night. Was it? I think. Is, is that because... Is that because... <laughs> All the cars that don't get up the final hill, they just pile them into a nearby field and yes. they just burn them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, the, that's the good thing about vintage cars, that they uh, they can easily be turned into matchwood. They, um, the owners are so they, fed up with being sodden and wet and fed up and Well, cold. that's it. I think it was, uh, it was bonfire night weekend because they identified that that was statistically likely to be the dampest weekend of the autumn. And that, of course, is the whole point of the London to Brian, is to be <laughs> incredibly damp and miserable. <laughs> I just don't understand. It's, I just feel so sorry for everybody. It's like, we, it's we like sitting in a communal shower in a convertible car and then someone <laughs> just switching it to cold and then going, do you want to put some more woolen coats on? Yes, I would. Thank you. <laughs> OK. <laughs> oh, by the way, do you want to wear a stupid period drama hat? Yes, please, if that's OK. <laughs> <laughs> now, the reason that I... So my first inkling that it, it was that weekend is because we went to London that weekend to go and stay with some friends and go to a fireworks display textbook. And on the motorway, on the way into London, we got into some traffic as we neared the city and we were just crawling along. In the next lane, there was a Grand Cherokee towing a vintage car of some sort. Aww. And my wife just went, why would you have that? <laughs> And I thought, it's, a, it's quite a good question. Like, just, well, because someone, why would you have that? Because someone has to. I suppose, well, yes, yes. Someone and has no. to, and we should be pleased that someone wants to. It, yes, now that I do agree with you, you're right. It's, it's good that somebody cares because it would seem cruel and, and thoughtless to just... To, you know, dispose of all these things because they don't conform to Absolutely. modern standards of, of dryness and speed. Yeah, and they're a reference point, they're a reminder. And let's face it, hopefully most of the world aren't total pricks like Whistling Diesel, so they don't just make a living from <laughs> needlessly destroying cars and then pointing at them and marvelling at the fact they don't know anything about them and then moving quickly yes. on to the next thing they're going to destroy. Obviously, I don't um, have a problem with him, apart from the fact that he's all of what I've just said. Um <laughs> And I just simply don't understand why people should care about his his opinion because I think mm. he's just attracting attention by, you know, it's like shooting rare lions and then going, "Hey, that was fun." No, it, it really wasn't fun, was it? It doesn't make you clever. Yeah. At all, so. Well, it's a sad corollary of uh, the the race for clicks, isn't it? That um, people like watching other people being absolute knobheads. Yeah. Well, I don't get me wrong. I like that when I see you know sort of drunken chavs falling down staircases and stuff i think that is quite funny <laughs> or you know tripping into beer gardens with a tray full of lager oh, i think i <laughs> love a, a good stumble with a tray full of lager <laughs> those things or i don't know like dad trying to do a backflip into a very small children's paddling pool in the garden yeah. off the roof or of a shed one of my absolute favorites and i will intermittently search for this on youtube is uh, running machine mishaps Oh, oh, the treadmill terror. I do. I really enjoy a running machine mishap. I mean, they can get a bit repetitive because there are basically sort of three solid accidents <laughs> that happen. And, and the, 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 <laughs> the, just getting fired off the back of it is is always a good one. But particularly, there's one I saw where a guy, and I mean, this, he could have been really badly hurt. The, 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 the compilations always cut away before you see the aftermath. But there's one where a guy got really fired backwards. You know, they set the machine going really fast. Yes. And they stand, they put their feet either side of the belt. Oh, gosh. The friction And then the idea burn. is to let it get up to a maximum speed and then sort of leap on and start running. Yeah, but it like, and, um, it, it turns you, it, it, three, six, it 720s you, doesn't it, basically? Yes. Well, it sort of turns you into, you know how Sonic the Hedgehog can do, become a sort of <laughs> fast-moving ball? It's like that, but then you get fired backwards, and this guy gets fired backwards into a rack of weights. <laughs> Does he really? 
I'll never find it again. If I do find it again, I'll stick it on the (laughs) Patreon. I watched it. I did. I got served by the Alan Garitham, a um, yeah. an Instagram video of a uh, of a, a should we just say a portly American gentleman showing his children how to drive the ride on lawn tractor, and basically yeah. just gets it spectacularly wrong. Bearing in mind he's the one supposed to be tutoring, um, he just I don't know how he does it, but he seems to sort of like dab the brake and then go for a high gear and then it snicks into a high gear, it takes off and he falls off the back of it really slowly, but holds <laughs> on to the seat and then just gets, then he turns into a human plough and then it's just going off around the garden with him ploughing with his ankles. It's just really, really odd. And the kids are just running after him and you just think it's a, it does like, I don't know, 12 miles an hour or something. <laughs> Oh, uh, speaking of vehicular accidents, um, we've had quite a few messages from listeners after we mentioned uh, P. Diddy's inexplicable motorcycle accident at the start of the um, I'll Be Missing You video. Oh, the grabbing of the front brake. Yes. Absolute full fistful of brake and off he goes. Um, (laughs) uh, Quite a few listeners said that apparently this was a genuine accident. Oh, that Diddy was riding the bike for those shots at the start of the vid, and he got a bit too close to the tracking car, panicked and grabbed the brake and came off, and then decided that it looked so cool they would keep it in the video. Wow. Well, and he obviously um, didn't die, so that's also good. Uh, amongst, amongst the listeners who pointed it out, uh, it's uh, Maritz Cavallo. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, but um, he he said apparently P did he was following the camera car, got too close and slammed on the brake like a flesh trombone and <laughs> stacked it. <laughs> he I also told- points out, and this is something I forgot to say last week that when we were talking about P Diddy and and the fact that he used um, every breath you take by the police in that that um, uh, Merritt points out he didn't clear the sample. He and didn't. Therefore, had to pay. He had to pay Sting an absolute fortune afterwards. Did, what, why would you not clear the sample when it's so overt? I know. Oh. I, I heard a case of this happening more recently, where, where a, a sort of a very well-known track was just used by another artist, and they didn't ask for permission or clear it properly. And you just go, who's? Why? Well, I think we've quite we've come quite a long way since. Was it Pump Up the Volume, where they used like about a hundred different samples and didn't clear any of them, and then that record went to number one? And they and lots nothing. of other recording artists. Well, Vanilla went, Ice Hang famously. On a sec. I think Vanilla Ice famously had to give Queen most of his money. Well, I'd imagine so. I mean, you um, sort of often do anyway if you go through the proper channels. Because you know, Bittersweet Symphony uses that um, string arrangement of a Rolling Stones song. That's true. And they ended up earning more that, money. That track then did really well, made loads of money, and almost all of that money went to Mick Jagger and Keith Richards. But until I think eventually they went, do you know what? Thanks, Richard Ashcroft. We've got enough of your money now. You can have a bit as well. And they they allowed, I think they they released the sample. I was going to say, the trousers I think, about five million quid or something. Yeah, like that. I think when you when you've got a, a shed load and someone's been quite creative with it, and maybe given the mm. song a new. Um, open it up to a new audience I can see why you, I would probably go look I've woken up this morning in a good mood I've had my coffee I've had my muesli I think you should have you should have quite a lot of the money now go on your turn <laughs> your turn have a go go on have a go uh, but I'll tell you what you can have all the money but first what you've got to do is I've got a really old car it was made in about 1901 um <laughs> If can you, you just can get from I, it, I just need I need you to drop it off at my Brighton house. Uh, it's actually in London, for, funnily enough. Oh, yeah. By the way, yeah. it's pissing down with rain. Oh, it's so wet out there. Oh, by the way, could you transport this heavy woolen coat by Ooh. wearing it in the car? Because uh, I want your body weight to triple by the time you arrive in Brighton. If yeah. you do, which you won't. Oh, and can you go via Costco or somewhere like that? I want. Can you get one of those huge catering packs of kitchen roll, but unwrap them all and just put them next to you on the passenger seat? <laughs> so, <laughs> I suppose the only tiny benefit of driving a vintage car, which inevitably has no roof on the London to Brighton, is at least it won't steam up. Well, no, That's of course. One- <laughs> 
wet weather problem you're not going to have. Some of them don't even have a windscreen, do they? They just have... I like the ones yeah. which just have a circle of glass in front of the driver. <laughs> Have you seen those? Yes, it's like, like a, a sort of, it's a, like a makeup mirror, but it's see through. It's a driving. Why? It's a driving monocle. It's a driving <laughs> monocle. And I always found that to be quite funny because you just think. I mean, the, some of them. I mean, we are mocking them, but they are you know, the, the forefathers of the things that we drive around in today, of course. But um, mm. and some of them have have fantastic technology. You know, we cut, we've got to mention all, all days and onions because it's a personal favourite of ours, which. Mm. It's still an ambition of mine to drive an all days and onions, and um, I won't take no for an answer if I do get that chance. I will be calling round on you, and I will be throwing a huge overcoat and a stupid hat at you and go, get in. Get in. <laughs> We're going for a very slow drive. <laughs> so, yeah, by the way, I've timed this perfectly. We're going into <laughs> Bristol, and it's 4.35. What could possibly happen on a Friday? <laughs> I thought you were going to say it's 100 miles to Brighton. It's damp and we're wearing heavy overcoats. Hit it. <laughs> Let's do this. Dun, 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 that would be dun, great. Dun. And I've just fashioned you some kitchen rolls, <laughs> socks and shoes. <laughs> <laughs> What's that kitchen roll that Stephen Fry used to have on size that he just go, thirst pockets. <laughs> and I think you want those super absorbent kitchen roll wrapped around your head. Until it becomes physically impossible to stand or sit upright. Oh, gosh. Either's good. Well, now, uh, since we're doing a little bit of housekeeping, uh, thank you to everybody who pointed out that um, that, that motorbike accidents in the P. Diddy video may have been a genuine accident. Um, we've had a lot of people sending us a screen grab from Facebook. Have we? Uh, which... It, it's, uh, it's, uh, and rightly so, because it's a bizarre sort of collision of two things in our world um which is quite chody shifters oh god and honda preludes oh is there a um, correlation well there is here this is a facebook grab i don't know who did the grab originally uh someone whose phone battery is on six percent and that's <laughs> quite, i do like it i do like an all revealing uneasy. screen grab um but uh so i mean loads and loads of people have sent us this uh including uh, uh ewan jones um and some other people who's <laughs> God, sam warren sam sent it sam sent the grab with the six percent phone so maybe that's sam's phone i don't know um so, so prioritizing our prelude thirst when your phone is so close to dying um deserves an almost honorary smith and sniff award of some sort i feel well i suppose yeah, so uh, I don't know who originally posted this, but it's somebody on Facebook who said, shift knob for the prelude got delivered today. Coming in at just over a pound, this thing is solid. And then there's, there are two pictures. One is a picture of this, to be honest, quite blendic metal <laughs> shift knob on a weighing scales, <laughs> which proves, this is in the US, I'm presuming, that proves it weighs just over one pound in weight. Okay, okay. Um, Great. And it says, it says, coming in at just over a pound, this thing is solid, exclamation mark. That added weight really makes the shifts feel solid and drastically improves the overall driving experience. 10 out of 10, would recommend. What? Now, the second picture is of it fitted. It's fitted to a bloody auto. So, I mean, what? There's, there's... How much does the shift experience need to be improved, given how much you're going to use it? Well, I, I, I'm, I'm a bit lost. I'm a bit lost, really. When you but, touch but it, the yeah, point is, is cold, it's fitted yeah. to a like, prelude. Like so. grabbing the handle, yeah, of a pistol or other firearm, yeah, that is totally not <laughs> legal in the country that you're in, yeah. You feel that power, yeah, you're in the club. You can't find anyone, um, phone is on 6%, yeah, you've got to find a crew, get out, yeah. <laughs> Pre nobody's touching the prelude outside, no marks on it, no scratches, no shit, no, nothing. But um, you bought an auto, yeah, because you want... <laughs> you want a really heavy shifter on it, yeah, with that cold feel of the steel. Um, also in the housekeeping desk, uh, a, a few people, including Reese Llewellyn, uh, pointed out that uh, Maureen from driving school, uh, Larder, the Reaver estate that you uh, you asked last week, I wonder if it's still going. Uh, people have checked, including Reese, and no. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um 
Uh, someone else knows, of course, I can't bloody find this now because my admin is lousy. But uh, somebody else, I think, did did say that th- they had reason to believe that it had been um, ceremoniously it had scrapped been or something written off. No, I think it had been written off. Now this might be on the Patreon, which is why I can't find it. But anyway, yeah, apparently uh, the Lada was replaced by a, another Lada, but a Samara oh, this time. Gosh. Uh, Reese sent a picture of Maureen leaning on the Samara, which it's, <laughs> I don't know when this picture was taken. Uh, there's another screen grab here. Maybe this is Reese. Reese's phone is perilously on 15%, and uh, it seems to be in power saving mode. Everybody, very cavalier What's battery usage on, on phones. Um, yeah, the the because uh, Reese sent the grab of uh, DVLA check on the Samara, because there's a picture of her with the reg visible, and uh, it's MOT expired. In September 2008, but the Lada Samara was, was taken. wasn't the Lada Samara genuinely quite quite a shit car though. Oh yeah, I think so. I think it was. We, they, we, all, we all jested about the Reva, but actually the Reva had some cred and some strength. Yeah, I've never driven a Samara, I'm but not it, sure that it does. just has a very sort of biscuit tinny vibe to it. Although it was it, Porsche helped out with the engineering. What? Yeah, I think Porsche, I'm pretty sure Porsche were involved in... I mean, probably they just went, mm, you probably just don't want to do that, lads. I don't know. I mean... Well, that was their involvement. Don't do, don't, yeah, do don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Do this. It's like, you know, they did... Uh, do you remember when Seat plastered system Porsche all over the Ibiza from the 80s? Well, um, I, I saw one of those on the Volvo EX30 launch. Did you? I was oh, dri- you were in Spain, weren't you? I was in ah. Spain, and I was driving along a lovely coastal road where we were trying to find somewhere good to film with not a lot of time. And I mm. actually saw, coming the other way, a really straight, clean, silver, first-gen Seat Ibiza. And Ooh. I did. I, I quickly checked my side mirror to see if it said engine system Porsche uh, sticker on the back window. But mm. I Unfortunately, it coincided with going around a very tight coastal road corner, and I decided that one of them was more of a priority than the other. <laughs> so I, you made a split-second decision there. Yeah, turn or look behind me for a sticker. No, turn. Has to turn. Mm. I like them. They're attractive, and they're bloody they're rare, but nobody cares now, I would say. in the in Well, the yeah, particularly in this country. I bet there's, there's almost none left. But that, the thing is, the, the, you know, that's, I think Sayat had to pay quite a bit of money to use the Porsche name on the outside because generally Porsche's engineering consultancy is a bit like you know sh- just keep it on the down low for everyone's sake mm. um, but I think from memory Porsche's involvement was pretty much they, like they sort of redesigned the cylinder head on the basically a Fiat engine it wasn't as if they sort of went here you could have a flat six out of a 9.30. had a 9.28 V8 in it, and they just uh, they chopped yeah. down a couple of cylinders. And-, and I think it was the same with the Samara. I think Porsche's involvement was pretty much sort of, you know, giving some guidance on redesigning the engine to be slightly less wretched, but that was... <laughs> slightly <laughs> less yeah. wretched. They designed the ashtray. All of the smoking members of staff from Porsche went, let's just look at where the tray is. Um, does it yeah. slide in and out easily? <laughs> Not really. Okay, let's redo those tabs and get a couple more plastic moulds yeah. done. And then we'll, yeah, let's knock that one out. All right, lads, thank you. <laughs> That'll be 100 million Deutschmarks, please. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Anyway, I don't, should, I, should I have a little look? I am you can all have, you can all have you know what? a carton of West for your time. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Those Ibithas, I, I, I always thought at the time and now that they, that's a really nice looking car, very crisp. A mm. good, that's a good effort from your old Gijaro there. It's uh, it's a really sort of neat and handsome car. Well, and it's got a front know, a little bit like a DeLorean, the, the the shallowness of the grille and everything. I think. I suppose so. Although it's sort of the, the headlights are kind of. Are they sort of more square? But yeah, it's a. I th- we've talked before about households that have two of the same car. Yeah, yeah. There were pe- some people down our road when I was growing up, and I can't remember. The, I think the mum had a Renault Four, and the dad, the dad had a Ford Capri, three liter. Wow. And then a Renault Fuego. Oh, so he did he chop the Capri in for the Fuego? I guess so. So he's a bit of a coupe enthusiast. And then... He's coupe guy. Out of the blue, there was almost like a clean house of cars in, in on their driveway. Both of those disappeared. 
and in their place two Seat Ibithas, a red one and a white one. Wow. See, and they bought them really, at the same time? Really, well, yeah, they just appeared, like they got a job lot, but they were both the three doors, because I don't think the five door had been announced. And they had kids sort of like the same age as, as in our household. So growing children, and they they decided to sort of, but I suppose there's probably more room in an Ibiza than in a Fuego. Yeah, they, they it's a halfway house between the, the Fuego and the Four. But what mm. if they bought them straight away when they were um, first launched? They might not have mm. even properly test-driven one. And I know people, and I'm no. sure you've met people, who buy a car, a brand-new car, without having test-driven it, because these days that's not always actually possible, which is still a bit odd, mm. but anyway. And and then uh, they live with it for a few months and then go, I actually don't really like this. I find some parts of it really irritating and mm. I kind of wish I hadn't. Imagine buying two of those and going, uh, oh, we've got, <laughs> oh, rid of, we've got rid of the Fuego as well. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. I uh, hate this car. I was thinking about this the other day. D- do people test drive cars anymore because i feel like there are so many other ways to buy cars oh as in you know you could just order one online from a lease company i'd say most people don't test drive cars now but whenever i do a review video call me old school but i always say obviously this is my review this is what i think these are the facts that i know about the car but it might not be the right car for you because you're you Mm. So therefore, mm. if you're thinking of buying this versus that versus that, please go and poke them, sit in them, spend a bit of time around them. Because the, I, if anything like Johnny Smith, which I sincerely hope you're not, the small things really irritate you after a while. It's mm. the big things I can almost live with. It's the small things which piss me right off. And um, yeah. Now, I was going to ask you about this, actually, because I watched your review of the Volvo EX30. Oh, well, thank which- you. Appreciate that. Sounds sounds great, and I'm genuinely very interested in that car for a number of reasons. And one of them is I'm sort of eyeing up what uh, what we might have to replace our E up in. Well, we've got a year and a bit, I think. Oh, you, you get, you're getting on there early on the on the order form, aren't you? You've got to though, haven't you? I mean, you've got to you've got to don't want to get caught out by suddenly going ah oh, shit because uh, anyway. So I, I sort of looked at that because also our kids are getting bigger, so you know maybe we need a slightly bigger car, but I don't want to go silly and. I I mean, you, obviously, you really liked it. Yeah. And it seems like for good reason. And I saw, I mean, it's funny because I saw some other reviews or read some other reviews where they were sort of saying the boot was too small. But I looked at it in your vid. It doesn't look that small. It no. It's sort of the size it should be for a car of that size. Well, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of EVs around that size where the boot's not as big as the petrol car. But... It's not sort of unforgivably small. I mean, the thing about boot space is it's not just about the literage, is it? It's about the real world shape and how you use that shape. And I actually think the shape of the the EX30 boot's pretty good. You've got that false floor thing, which you can drop it down if you don't want the old uh, flush threshold, Richard. Mm -hmm. So so if you were going to walk into the boot, you're less likely to trip up. Um, So... You've got that, but also the back of the car is quite flat. You know, it's a vertical, it's a vertical bum. So I think it probably makes use of it better. If you took the parcel shelf out and frisbeed it into a nearby landfill site, um, mm. you could probably put a dog in it, um, and the dog could see out. <laughs> well, because because okay. I get asked this a lot because all these sort of fast backed hatchbacks they do ruin mm. dogs' headspace, don't they? Yes. So, oh, yeah. So I actually think, yeah, I actually think it's really good. I mean, I had a Kia Soul long-term electric a um, few years ago, which I really liked. Mm. But the boot for that car, for the size of it, was on the small side. Um, whereas, like, the, the Zoe, if you're talking pure EVs, the Zoe has mm. a massive boot for its size of its car. But people don't ever seem to buy a Zoe for the boot. I don't know. so Or they don't th- – because it's been out for ages, they just don't consider it. So – well, if, you, if you're making a solo run to the supermarket just to pick up a few things, yeah. and you, particularly if you have a five-door car, yeah. I think it's absolutely textbook that you just open the back door and sling the shopping on the foot in the, oh, on it's, the floor it's, in the back. It's passenger seat or footwell of, of the rear, really. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm with you. No one, no one goes to the boot. I, th- just, I think seems if too much. What I would say is don't let Tiff Nadell catch you doing that. Cause, cause, really? Yeah, because he's a very specific man, as you know. 
And he'll be going, no, no, the boot's for the boot. The boot's for stuff like this. Don't put it in there. Don't put it in there. Put it in the boot. The boot, the boot, the boot. And he'll always go, tether it down, tether it down, because you don't want it all smashing around. And you think, that's because I know how you drive back from the supermarket, Tim. Well, yes. On but it. I, uh, <laughs> maybe if Tiff does another autobiography, it should just be called A Very Specific Man with <laughs> Tiffany <laughs> <laughs> Specificity with Tiff Nadell. Um I, no, My other question about the X30 was just about the screen and the, the, particularly the um, where some of the things, the functions are hidden. Because yeah. I saw um, Matt Pryor out of off of the auto car yeah. saying that it was absolutely infuriating that like the fog lights are hidden, sort of four layers down and things, which I didn't think they were allowed to do. There are certain. Yeah, I mean, has a warning you're not allowed to do that, certainly. Yeah, um, and I think heated... <clears throat> is heated rear window? I forget now which ones have to be sort of accessible at yeah. all times, but definitely yeah. hazard warning, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I didn't delve into every single part of it because we were pushed for time, but that you've got that little bar at the bottom which has your, your, your regularly uh, required tiles on it, so Volvo says. So in other words, if they wanted to rejig the software, you, you could change mm. that. And I'm pretty sure the very top bar has some necessary things which never move, like the home button. But um, yeah. the, the, the Speedo is, is annoying because it's the same as the Tesla Model 3, although I haven't driven the revised Model 3. I've got that coming, actually, fairly soon. But I, Have you? Oh. Yeah, it, I do find it odd that, you know, I I said I, I want I want speed right ahead of me, and head up displays are not an expensive item anymore. They've been around a while, they do the job, they're discreet, and um, I kept turning my head to the central tablet binnacle thing to look at my speed, and the the, the, the what offended me the most is the frigging car told me to pay better attention because it's little face scanning item which is where you want the speed of the car to be the speedo mm. was scanning my eyes and saying oh your eyes have been off the um uh, away from 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 looking out for i don't know six seconds pay pay better yeah. attention but it's like but you created this problem yes you stroker i had exactly the same thing in the lexus rz their full ev thing which is it's actually a sort of a nice car hidden under some layers of really annoying shit that you have to try and turn off but <laughs> that face scanner <laughs> is behind it's on the the steering column shroud yeah so that's it if you drive with your arm across the wheel at any point yeah it panics because it can't see you yeah if you put sunglasses on, it panics that it can't see you. And you're like, I'm, this is a normal thing to do, you fuckwit. And then <laughs> it bollocks you for looking at its own <laughs> touchscreen. There's not, the speedo is in front of you in the conventional way, but you know, the touchscreen is a little bit fiddly, as they often are. Sometimes you're just trying to like change a radio station, and it's going, look at the road. And you're like, well, if you'd made your controls easier to use, I would be. Well, it, it, but then you do feel like you're in a destructive relationship. I, I yes, think. I you go, but it's you told me to do this. I can't do it any other way. <laughs> Is it? I don't know if you've encountered this in the Volvo, but in the Lexus, one of the things that it, it would it'd get cross about is if you were coming up to a you know a big roundabout and it's very open, you can see what's coming. So you're looking out the side window, yes, just to double check your way is clear, yeah, and the car is still moving, and it would start shouting at you, and you're like, but I'm doing the right thing here. I I know there's no car in front of me but I don't know what's coming from the side. So I am looking the correct way for safety and you're giving me a telling off. And then I took that Lexus to a safari park and it bollocked me for looking at a lion. So <laughs> at that point, I fully had enough of it. Well, look, um, have you got any more questions about the EX30 or, or not? Just Well, or have you- the one thing, I, the, what I really wanted to bring up is because I, I heard you talk about, you know, why hasn't it got a head-up display in your review? Mm. And I just wanted to put something out there Okay. And I may be alone on this. I don't like head-up displays. Hmm? No. In fact, I, I, I wouldn't say I hate them, but in any given car, I would usually turn them off. What? Are you some sort of? Yeah. Are you some sort of stroker? Well, no, because I've been driving for bloody years, and it's like we didn't used to have head-up displays. So I sort of my brain is programmed to look. And maybe it would be different in a car with an offset speedo, but I don't remember. I don't remember it bothering me like in sort of minis and things. But. I I just I find I just look through head up displays. My I don't. Oh, you don't just, just don't get them. on with them. 
and I don't compute them. And instinctively, I want to know my speed. I'm looking down at the instruments and not at the thing. I just, I ultimately find them, they're just in the way of me looking through the screen. It's like separate the two functions windscreen for seeing road ahead, <laughs> instruments for seeing speed and other information. And I don't, and when they do the nav as well, they do the nav things. I just, I somehow, I just don't. I quite, I've always so wrong with my brain. I've always got the theme tune to Knight Rider in the back of my head when I do it because it's always <laughs> the head up display is always in a sort of like eighties orange or yes. light green that were always sort of like Casio yeah. digital watches that were very futuristic yeah. back in the day <laughs> and all that. And uh, and so I always quite enjoy that that retroness about them. And um and you know what? Um probably for all of my career on fifth gear I kept saying heads up display instead of head up display because it was almost became a bit of a tick and mm. I hated myself for it. And people used to sometimes troll me on the internet going, you don't, you keep saying it wrong. You, you're saying heads up display. It's not heads up, it's head up. And I go, I oh, know, but every time I'm doing it, you know, my brain just wants to keep saying heads up. Well, this is the thing you're confusing the military inspired hardware of a head up display that allows you to keep your head up with oh heads up the popular way of attracting people's attention when you're throwing something to them <laughs> that's right so whenever someone's throwing a cricket ball at me while i'm driving to work i yeah I've always, you shout head up yeah, i mean sorry up. heads up yeah 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 and i have the sunroof completely open um <laughs> well do you know what in the let, let's go away from he- head up or not head up um uh, mm. discussion do you know what I'm driving this week? Uh, yes, I do, because you messaged me a cryptic message about it. Oh, it's not something I've bought. It's a, re- it's, you know, it's a brand new car. But um, I, I'm driving a Honda Jazz, specifically a Honda Jazz Cross Star, or Croster, because it's one. Croster. Croster, Cross Star. <laughs> it's, I don't actually know, but it's only got two S's <laughs> in the middle. It's so sister. Or is it Cross Tar? It's really angry with the tarmac. Uh- <laughs> That it's sitting on. <laughs> yeah. Wait a second, how many S's tar- does it have in it? It's got two. Oh, I see. So it's cross tar. Yeah, so it's angry with tarmac. Yeah? Now, just let me... I'm going to just look this up because I, I'm i trying to but picture. I, this is the. This is like a Rover Streetwise. This is exactly like... Audi Allroad. Yeah, like a, a, an easy... Check my up-to-date references. I was going to say, <laughs> easy listening Audi Allroad. Um, so... Oh, tiny bit. That of, looks quite sweet. It's really nice, I have to say. So it's roof rails, bit of um, extra yes. cladding on the arches and the and the bottoms of the doors. And I don't know. It's about half a centimetre higher off the road. Maybe. I mean, no one cares or looks. Um, hmm. Although I did accidentally go over a vicious speed <laughs> speed ramp in the dark two nights ago, um, not noticing it at all because it wasn't it wasn't lit up. And I went over it at probably 25 miles an hour when it was one of those ones that was an absolute triangle. And uh, I can tell you, the Croster just took it. It just, it just took it. It's a good it. job. Um, I'm just toggling through the jazz range. They facelifted this jazz mm-hmm. without mentioning it, seemingly, um, because they all now seem to have a grill where previously some of them were a bit sort of smooth nosed. I like the smooth nose because it looked a little bit like a, a, a performing dolphin mm. and, and, and less conventional. But I bet they've gone back to grill because it's just more conventional. But I, I like the yeah. I like the smooth nose. But the Crosta, um, do you know what I love about this? The Crosta. I, 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 mm. I wasn't expected to, to talk about this because it's, it's a CVT 1.5 petrol mild hybrid job. So right. it's really great until you, you press the throttle hard and then you get that horrible like shout. Uh, uh, like someone ill in bed in the next room. <laughs> What's a, a Victorian person He's just horrible <laughs> consumption uh, uh, but park that for a second all okay. of the fundamentals I went on a very very um, late night um, cold dark drive to North Wales so a four and a half hour mm. drive and it was perfect it has really lovely upholstery in it the seats are, are, are fantastic I've just seen this. It says it has water repellent upholstery. Well, I'm not saying whether I tested that or not, but what I am saying is when I got to my shoot in Wales the next day, it was pissing with rain mm. all day, and I maybe got in and out of it with coats on, and I was mm. dripping. 
Um, but the comfort level, awesome. Secondly, two-spoke steering wheel. I'm a big fan of the two-spoke. It's controversial. I think it's the same steering wheel as the Honda E because I'm very fond of it. Looks great. Massive mm. boot, or it seemingly has a massive boot. I don't know entirely the literage, but you open the boot and the shape that you're greeted with is good. Very dad mm. comment that I know, but, I'm, mm-hmm. but I, I agree. <laughs> it's the second time we start talking about boots. I know, I know, we're being bad. But the other thing is, is the infotainment. It's got a quite a small screen by today's standards, nine inch, I think. But all of the tiles mm. and all of the fonts and all, all the icons and everything are extremely large, like those telephones with large buttons on f- for landlines for older people. I was going to say, so it's got a large print screen yeah. and water-resistant upholstery. They're doing nothing to disabuse us of this idea <laughs> this is a car for old people. But you know what? The thing is, is I've, we, we drive a lot of new cars, and there's a lot of new cars that aren't all that and don't mm. move the game on at all. I found mm. the Jazz to be just utterly pleasant, and as a... As an everyday machine, I just thought yeah. I loved the layout of it, and the thing that made me it made me giggle a lot to the point where when my brother um, came and um, had a lift in it yesterday, I said to him, "I said, get in and look out the windscreen." I said, "The windscreen's almost flat because it's got huge quarter windows either side, huge." Mm. And I said, "It almost feels like you're in a modern train. You're driving a modern train." And he goes, yeah, yeah, it's like one of those brand new, what are those trains called that have replaced the Intercity 125 finally? God rest its soul. Uh, the Pendolinos. That's the Pendolinos, which just sounds like a street gang that's muscled in and taken over the yes, streets. Yes, it also, it just reminds me of the word pendulous, which is rarely used <laughs> in a positive context. But are they are they Pendolinos now? Are they, are they probably, that's a, that's a uh, sort of like a, a trade name, isn't it, effectively? Well, this is I a think. question I'm for either Francis Bourgeois or um, oh, yeah. uh, about train-related material. But you feel like you're in a high-speed train cabin, but with really uh, colourful, easy-to-see icons. You see, I was going to say, I don't think modern trains do have the sort of big quarter lights. If anything, modern trains always look to me quite claustrophobic, like they've got blinkers on. Oh, really? Because they don't what? really have much in the way of side. I was looking at the Pendolinos. So, uh, Pendolinos are officially Class 390s. I knew that. Uh, I just wanted to say that before <clears throat> before our train audience yeah, I knew that. gets in touch furiously. But, um, uh, yeah, look, no, Pendolinos are quite – they're not actually very quarter-lighty. All right. Well, and well, well, maybe I'm going back have to a look the old at the school picture of- Intercity 125, which actually we didn't mention, yes. but a few weeks back got finally yeah. retired, didn't it? Yes, and I read somewhere that a load of them are getting refurbished and exported to, I think, Mexico. Are they? Yeah, but which in a way is really nice that they've still got a bit of life left in them. That is, that is fabulous looking trains, aren't are they? Are they going to live an expat life? So, oh so what? <laughs> just one of them's going to have three quarter length trousers on for the rest of its life and a slightly open shirt, which it wouldn't have had in the country it came from originally. So. When its friends come to see it, they go, wow, you, you're so different. And they go, well, the lifestyle's different here. And so I'm just enjoying it for what it is. Oh, you don't mean those, one of those expats that just goes on and on about how glad they are they made the move. Oh, you'd never catch me going back living in Britain now. God, it's absolute shithole. But then they're just absolutely obsessed with the news back home. Yeah. Or subscribing to The Week and um, watching BBC World or whatever That's what now. it is, yeah. And then when the economy turns a little bit, they come scuttling back. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's just they develop, they develop a, a, some kind of illness that requires medication, and they have to come back that's, and use the NHS. That's, do you know what you've hit the nail on the head? You 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 you, you suddenly see them in the news agent in Leon C, and you go, "Hang on a minute, yeah. Derek, I thought you Dear were Mac, oh, diabetes, mate." Yeah, yeah. I, hang on, I thought you were in a Mexican beach resort. Well, yeah, don't really want to talk about it, but uh, so, yeah. yeah. But yeah, unfortunately, I've got. Some, Problem is these pills some that I need. Of, you know, they're twelve grand, yeah. twelve grand every every year. So. Um, the uh, I'll, I, I, I won't look this up now, but anyway, I'm sure someone will will point this out. But yeah, I think I think some of the uh, the old one two fives are having a second life. Um, so the jazz cluster, I, I really like it. Yeah. Whether it's, <laughs> I was going to say, where were where we? Where were we? Well, know, that's now. where we were. The jazz, the jazz crow star, the jazz crochet, and I. I actually I dig it, and I think to anyone that just mocks Honda Jazzes because they know the key audience is over sixty five, doesn't matter. Mm. 
it's a good car. They are the, the certainly the Mark One and the Mark Two are cockroach vehicles. Um, and there's a lot to like. There's a lot of good packaging going on there. So yeah, mm. and yeah, I like the Volvo EX30. It's not perfect, but it's good, and it's I think it's tried much harder than most in recent mm. time in that kind of size of car, and certainly the price tag. And no, I'm not offended by the fact it's made in China because a lot of stuff is, is made in China. Oh yes, it is it made is, in China. But then they're going to start making it in Belgium, aren't they? I actually don't know, Richard. Uh, you've caught me I out. Thought I read this the other day. No, I thought that, that they sort of they're expecting such demand that I think that it's going to. It, initially, they'll be coming from China. Yeah, but they're going to. Yeah, they're going to start building it in Ghent. Ghent. I love that. I love. I love in the. Belgium. I love the name Ghent. It's great because it mm. almost because it, it's, 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 it sounds it very, sounds rude. It sounds you really really similar to Gunt, <laughs> which I am not going oh, to explain to no, listeners. No, let's just no. Uh, yeah, here's a, it says uh, oh American oh Volvo Global Newsroom. It says production of the EX30 started earlier this fall in uh, Zhangjiaqu. <laughs> Did you have to? Certainly not. You had to go up at the end like uh, that. <laughs> Jiaqu in China, and the first car, the cars are scheduled to reach customers later this year. The decision to also build the EX30 in Kent uh, in Kent boosts production capacity for the expected ES30 demand in Europe, as well as for global export. Volvo is a very global car company because they've got. I mean, I know sort of BMW are and obviously Toyota and. and Volkswagen are, but you, sort of these these kind of more medium sized car companies. I know Volvo's part of Geely, but even so, as a, as a firm, Volvo has what factories in China and the US and Europe. They've got quite a global footprint of factories. I, I, I don't know if that's interesting. Sorry, I just uh, sorry, I, I had to just leave my chair and um, wrestle a tortoise. Just hang on a sec. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not Did a you euphemism either. Just, just, the shelled warrior was it got into a bit of a tight spot and it needed. Oh, you right. know, it's it's the way people manoeuvre these days and they fully rely on the sensors without looking at the mirrors and then they realise they're just yes. stuck. Yes. And she was stuck. Um, I, I, there was, there's a handy list here. It says uh, Volvo's uh, production plants are located in Gothenburg, Ghent, South Carolina, USA, Chengdu, Daking and Taizu in China. And the company also has R&D and design centres in Gothenburg and Shanghai. It, so it's listed its factories here, but then, it, then it's, it doesn't list the factory it's already talked about in Zhangjiaqu. Is that somewhere different? Anyway. Well, I mean, I, I will summarise. I mean, obviously, it'd be great if you wanted to watch my review on the late break show of the EX30, but I will summarise. I, I have, and I did, well, and I enjoyed and I, it. And I, I think I encourage other people to do that. I, th- I appreciate that, Rich, because, you know, you don't have to. But... I would say it does it does the Volvo y things really well. It's comfortable. The ride is good. Uh, mm. and it probably handles better than almost any Volvo I can remember. It's it's a sharper um sharper handling. Um and it's bloody fast if you want it to be, and as an E V, an incredible range. And so therefore I think it's an interesting car, and it has some interesting. interesting. It has interesting materials, and there's definitely a trim trim for everybody. Uh, this just in. Sorry, I was listening. But no, I no, I don't expect to listen. We've talked about cars for far too long. Can you talk about trousers like you were going to? Oh well, I was going to, but I just want to say about these trains. The the old uh, intercity one two fives or HSTs. Yes. some people seem to call them. Um, they. Uh, the, the, well, this is no, this is from Railtech website but they're sort of they're not saying this definitively they're saying people have spotted these trains um but it says it's understood they're being exported and the destination for these hsts is the tren maya line in the yucatan yucatan peninsula south of cancun mexico oh brilliant which was due to be electrified but hasn't been so they need some interim diesel trains and uh the hsts predators the fastest diesels in the world and the trains that saved britain's long distance rail travel how are they going to get them over there i'd love to know the ins and outs well it says they've been seen on the quayside at british ports i'd love to see that i'd love to see a train being loaded onto a boat i bet it looks amazing i mean call me francis bourgeois 
but I would go down there with with a picnic and a and a flask and you in the passenger seat, and I would sit and watch that. Oh my god! Would you? I would love to see. Them. Why aren't they letting Francis Bourgeois operate the crane that puts one of these these trains onto the? Absolutely. Onto the boat? I wonder how they do it. It just it looks like something that a lot could go wrong. At. I think they take a bit of a speed up. So they've obviously got a siding where the rail comes to the port because obviously a lot of rail freight, and then it just ends. Probably should we say what fifty meters from where the ferry would back up to mm. the edge of the harbour. So mm. I think what they'll do is they'll put some planks down and some really slippery lino. <laughs> Then they'll take a bit of a run up, and just before the rails end, they'll come completely off the throttle, <laughs> and then they'll put a load of hay bales either side, like a seventies motorsport event, and they'll just let the HST glide, hopefully in the right direction. Let's just hope that the the ferry hasn't moved up and down on the waves too much, and it'll just sort of just sort of gash its way into the belly of the ship, <laughs> and then. And they'll just contact people in Mexico in a few weeks' time and go, um, it's been a really rough sea. So the one, two, one of the 125s sort of, is sort of got one side of it's a little bit dented. It's a bit scraped up, but that's OK. I, now, I mean, I've, I've got another article here, actually, which confirms this is what's happened. Uh, the Mexican government has received 11 former British high-speed train coaches and three HST Class 43 diesel power cars. Bloody love this. Which will operate on the upgraded isthmus of Tehuantepec. I can't read that. Tehuan Tehuantepec. Isthmus of Tehuantepec railway from Cos- Oh my fucking god. It's pronunciation minefield this week. I can't do the co- from Cozalac. <laughs> Just love it. I love the fact that you're trying. Kozakolokos. No, Kozakolokos. Do it like an expat who doesn't want to learn the local <laughs> lingo, please. Just, or an Australian. Just call it Kodo. Yeah, right. Uh, Kodo to Selena Cruz. Uh, the rolling stock left the port of Great Yarmouth on the east coast. That's a wrong coast. Oh, great. Why did they send it to fuck me? Get a map, people. If you're going west, start on the west. But you know it's why? your life difficult. It's because Yarmouth's probably going through a, a bit of a quiet time economically. So they mm. probably... Do you know what the, the method I just spoke about where you would take a bit of a run-up yeah. and sort of gash its Jump way in? in. <laughs> <laughs> they did it in the dead of night. Um, yeah, and they were like, "Don't worry, no one will see this. It'll be fine. We just got to get these things out, get them shipped. Come on, chop chop." But the, the Great Yarmouth is, is no stranger to some odd things um, being packaged. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think anyone who's ever been to Great Yarmouth would agree with that. Uh, well, I, I mean, I yeah, I've I've been there out of season and in season a number of times. Ooh. But I'm a big fan of the rickety and now I think it's been condemned Winter Gardens on the seafront huge Victorian glass building because I'm still marvelling and reeling at the fact that it used to live in Torquay and it got bought and put on a boat or floated on a barge all the way from Torquay to Great Yarmouth, this huge, like huge glass house and didn't fall down, I don't know how, and then reinforced and, uh, 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 and erected... At Great Yarmouth, and it has apparently it's got well, it did have some you know it was winter gardens and it did have lovely plants in it had a roller coaster and kids play area but now it started falling down and now they've just locked the door and run away and I'd I'd like to go in there anyway it's probably more information than anyone cares about but yeah it got mm. it got moved on a barge and that just seems like a ludicrous idea but it did saying that though uh, well, here is a ludicrous I said, idea I mean, in uh, general uh, it's it may shock people to know but this podcast is not. Uh, expert in global freight shipping uh, what i was going to say though a slight change of subject is have you seen this was on last week on the utopian you know the website the utopian i like that website. website um they had found these old fiat adverts from the 70s when fiat had a deal with remy julien you're the stunt driver oh my gosh legend series of adverts involving insane stunt work including one for the 127 hatchback in which it jumps onto an empty car carrying train yes i have seen that yes it's nuts it drives the length of it while the train is moving but you see every time it goes over the the joint between two carriages 
it has to do a little jump and then the car is squirrelling all over the place on the top of a moving train it's really bloody hairy i'd love to know if there's any um if there's any making of behind the scenes of that because it is sketchy af and i bet there was op- open helmet um smoking cigarettes and just a really thin boiler suit that wouldn't do a damn thing to bones oh yeah <laughs> Isn't that just a painter and decorator suit? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's one for the one, two, four saloon where a, a car, this is what reminded me of it because it's about jumping uh, trains onto cargo ships. There's one where a car jumps onto a, a ferry. Oh, really? Yeah. It's re- and, then, and then they cut to, obviously, then a sort of, I guess. A, a, like that Top a, a Gear stuff that you lot up. did with Ross Kemp in the boot. Yes. Um, it like that, but they did it successfully. And then there's a there's a, the because it's an advert. So then there's the pack shot of the car. Then the reverse angle on the ferry, the part of the car pulls up re- in a really crisp stop for the end shot, and it's just a joy to behold. Remy Julien was was I don't I'm saying was I don't know if he's still alive. If he's alive, I need to find him and interview that man because he died only about two years ago, I think. Shit from covid i think did he yeah i seem to remember it was in the hang on let's have a look jeremy julien french stunt performer yeah he died in january 2021 apparently that's such a shame what a legend and he was yeah. a legend and he's he died from covid 19 on the evening of 21st january 2021 so he did all of these things and then, and then the died end, off COVID of covid it's rather sad yeah. isn't it i mean he'd lived to be 90 apparently which is Pretty I bet he was cool as well. Oh yeah, I bet he was cool. I bet he was really also, cool. Also, he lived to ninety. I mean, you just—I'm I, 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 almost certain that he was a heavy smoker in his day. Because you just assume, wouldn't you? Well, you just would. Wouldn't you, you just assume. <laughs> you just assume. <laughs> I um. Oh, I know. What I wanted to speak about. Now we've talked about it in yes. previous Smith and Sniffses. Um, about Madness, the band Madness. Yes. And you know their affiliation off of the early 80s with um, Honda's uh, City Jazz and Moto Compo adverts in the homeland of Japan? Yeah. Where they shout, I think, did they just shout jazz? They shouted something relentlessly. Uh, I think it's Honda, 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 or Jazz, 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 or something like that. Yes. We talked about it. Um Yes, but the reason why I'm saying this is because on the after the recent uh, Japanese um, mobility show, Honda have launched the Moto Compacto, mm. and it's so it's an electric suitcase scooter essentially. And as someone that used to own a Moto Compo, I'm all in, Rich. I've contacted a couple of dealers in 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 um, in America. I'm trying to buy one. I'm trying to order one. Really? Yeah, because I really want mm. one. Even though they've got a top speed of fifteen miles an hour, because they're a f- they're like a final mile mobility solution that goes in the boot of pretty much every car, and you can carry it with one handle. Apparently, even weak oh. weak people like me. Um, <laughs> and I just really want one. I I just think they're great, but you can't get them in the UK. I've spoken to Honda UK and oh. said, "Could you help me order one?" And they went, "No, not really." And I went, "Well, thanks for that. Appreciate that." <laughs> so please, look, Honda, if, you, if, you, if you're listening, can you just rethink that? Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, but it's it's great. It's great. It, <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why it's, funny. it's just it's something. It's the worst possible answer. Is, could you help me order one? No, no, is is one thing, but it's just mm, not really. So this is a. It's, just, it's a. Just, come on, it's, this is a a suitcase that you straddle it's 3.7 inches wide and it is so up your street oh, i know and i love it and it's as a piece of design it's wonderful and i've been longing for the moto compo to return i wish it's very neat i did see this and i thought it's a very neat design yeah i don't of course i don't I, thought, I don't need it I don't, I don't need it whatsoever but well no i mean there's lots of things you've bought recently that you don't need which, <laughs> which we're not talking about are we because no we, we, you're going to do videos about i them. will reveal these things in due course uh, but let's just put it like this. Recently, there's been a lot of right car, wrong time going on. And 
downright car road time with Johnny Smith. Yeah. It'll be your new sub channel. I think it'd be a really um, successful TV series where you're just constantly making your life unnecessarily complicated by yes. being a complete flute <laughs> <laughs> with your decisions. But anyway, what's the worst that can happen? Hashtag <laughs> Doctor. That Bob. is a whole series in itself of just bad decisions. Each week we look at somebody who makes their own life more difficult because of their really shaky judgment yeah on matters yeah um uh, before we go which we should do in a minute i just wanted to read this to you it's, it's someone we know yeah. who works in the car industry sent us this which um it's i've anonymized to some degree um but they they worked at the, that's a car company around the year 2000 when um a senior engineer was dispatched to the nardo test track in italy to assess the facilities oh part of this involved a tour with a member of their security team so our guy jumped aboard a new fiat multipler and proceeded to have a tour in broken english it was his first time in a multipler and he became fascinated by the seating layout and options noting that the central front seat in this car was folded down to make a table yes Wanting to see how much room there really was, he started to fiddle about with the seat levers as they drove along. Oh. And at this point, the driver became agitated, shouting, no, 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 and weaving the car as he tried to stop any more seat lever pushing. Suddenly, the seat back sprung to its upright position to reveal, underneath, a pile of Italian top-shelf grot. <laughs> The two men looked at each other. The driver slowly closed the seat back down and they continued the rest of the tour in silence. <laughs> That's just something I wasn't expecting you to say. I thought there was going to be an accident no, me out as well. involving a, a seat that was jamming against, I don't know, the gear lever or the handbrake or something. I'll be honest, when when this friend of ours sent this to me and I, <laughs> I saw this and he's oh, an engineer, he's never been in a multiple before, he's, I was like, oh, this is going to be the story about how his car company almost made a three abreast car. This is going to be fascinating yes. insight into it. But no, <laughs> but no it's that's how the middle seat in a multiple could be folded flat to conceal a stash of Italian bongo bags <laughs> for the security people of the Nardo test track. <laughs> Possibly not what Fiat had in mind when they came up with Hang that. Hang on a minute. Car, Did you say um, this was the year 2000, millennium? Yeah. So someone, yeah, someone's, someone's keeping it real with pre internet uh, continental pamphlets, aren't they? <laughs> Well, I'm imagining 20-odd years ago that a Nardo is, is – I've never been there, but it's I think it's quite remote, isn't it? It's right down the south of Italy, and it's sort of in the countryside. Oh, so you're and saying not, connectivity wasn't what it is? Connectivity is not going to be great, because uh, why would there be? Particularly sort of on the far side of the track, on the high-speed <clears> loop <throat> bowl. The, yeah, I'm sure you're pre-smartphones, really, aren't you, at that point? So, you know, unless you've got a Nokia WAP phone, and then it's not... Don't say just, WAP, it, it means different something time. different now. You can't... I know, it does sound rude yeah. in, in that context, but yes. So, but then, and then he's suddenly gone, oh, we've got a new security car for on site. Oh, brilliant. Look, you can... You can st you can st <laughs> stash jazz bags. What of the Italian? What did he jazz shout? Bags. No, 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 no! But started weaving the car about to try and stop this guy from fiddling with the seats. <laughs> it's like, that is quite an extreme reaction. He really didn't want him to find the stash. Oh, guys, that's just, it's probably tickled me. Probably tickled me. I knew it would. I said to our mate, he sent me this story. He just he WhatsApped it to me, and I said, "If I, if I, no names, no petrol, but can I read this out because I know it will make Johnny laugh." Um, <laughs> and sure enough, right. Well, um, on that <sighs> slightly smutty note, it is time to end. But before we go, I have uh, three things to tell you. They are one. Johnny has a solo YouTube channel. It's called the State It's Canapes Show, in which Johnny proudly mispronounces the name for small nibbly foods in crowded situations. Oh, gosh. Uh, this week, he's at a funeral in Preston, noisily arguing with the widow about what to call a tray of tiny flans. <laughs> if that's not to your taste, there's always the Late Break Show. Lots of excellent videos on there. Uh, Volvo EX30 review is very good. Go and watch that. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, well, when you listen to this, uh, a freshly baked car cave um, visit will have gone live, and it's... A lovely, interesting chap called Michael. 
and it's got I think four barns, but what one of the barns is turned into like a real kind of personal cathedral of vehicles, and he likes eclectic. He's got everything from an Aston DB5 and a Lynx Aventa Ooh. to a to a Mark II Sirocco GT mm. to uh, yeah, he's got some really really oh and a Montego Turbo. Oh, so he's got some cool stuff, and he. Um, and, wow. and I and I personally thought he was a very interesting chap in him in himself. So it was a, just a mm. really good day out, and um, so I would I would urge you to go and meet Michael and his car cave digitally. Oh well, so do it. Otherwise, I'll come round there and I'll um, I'll bring my Leyland P seventy six fake taxi, which uh, one of our listeners from Australia has sent me uh, from called. Uh, oh. From Duncan Ham, I think he's Duncan Hamilton. No, not Duncan Hamilton. He's somebody else. It's yeah, that's somebody. a chap called Stephen <laughs> Stephen Moran or Moran. Uh, from, who said um, I went to a car jamboree in New South Wales and I saw a lovely Leyland P seventy six, which is yellow with lots of sunburn patination, with the fake taxi sticker on it. He said, normally... And why do people do this? I don't... Have I mentioned on the podcast about the really... It's quite a tidy Mark I Focus that I see. I walk past quite often with a dog. And it's got a fake taxi sticker on it. And I was like, what, what is that? Why? What do... It, well, just, it's not something it's, I'd be celebrating that goes on in well, my car. Are you going... You know, people put stickers on their cars to show brands that they enjoy consuming. So this is just basically... You might just put I heart wanking on your car. Yeah. Or are you trying to suggest that your car is a fake taxi? In which case... I mean, that's quite an unsavoury thing to well, advertise in a lot of ways. I don't know. Anyway, it's a lot to unpack. It's but a shame uh, because uh, I like seeing a tidy Mark One Focus. And I but I have to say this, and I will put it on for Patreons. It's a lovely, lovely P76. Sweet, sweet example of the Mark, I have to say, and I am a little bit mm. gel about it. But it has the fake taxi sticker, and it says, normally well known for its ability to carry a 55-gallon drum in the boot, but I feel this one might be well known for different reasons now. Um, mm. Got to say, yeah. But also, he did see a guy with um, a steam rally uh, stationary engine nearby, and of course, the the infamous. Uh, the, what am I trying to say? I'm getting distracted by the fact the contraption just looks so confusing, and he's just sat in a chair, just staring at it. Um, it'll definitely do that all day, but with perhaps an Australian accent. Um, thank you for that. <laughs> just just a question mark at the end. <laughs> uh, the um, where were we? Uh, well, we were know. signing oh, off. Uh, we were trying thing. to say goodbye, basically. Yeah, we were, weren't we? Oh, but I also I just I've suddenly remembered uh, lots and lots of people have sent us that link to that uh, new Rimats record for reversing 171 miles. Yeah, hour, bloody hell, it's, terrifying. Yeah. Bloody hell. I sent um, I sent my mate Marte. You might know him. I sent him a message going, "Who the frig thought that was a good idea? What a terrifying thing to do." Um. Mm. Didn't get didn't get a response back, uh, but anyway, I know he's read it. <laughs> he's, still, he's still shaking. Um, yeah, second thing I've got to tell you is I've got various books out. One of them is called Steel Flies. If you want a Cold War thriller, but it's all made up and rubbish, then uh, get that. And boring car trivia. Pictures, you know, you got three volumes. Boring car trivia four is so close to being finished, and it's just I, I try to do the bloody cover now, and then. Uh, do you want me to do it's it? There. I, I can sketch quite f- detailed have things to. on post its these days. It seems to be my. My new therapy. I had two ideas. One of them involved trying to get permission to use an image, which I'm still uh, talking to someone about. And then the other one, uh, I was doing sketches, and I did some sketches, and they're rubbish. And I'm now talking to someone who can actually draw about doing some sketches. But it's just like, I just, uh, I, I should have left it so late. It's just my fault. In. It is coming soon. Um, and the third thing I've got to do is that the, the spoken word bits on uh, Slave to the Rhythm by Grace Jones were done by the actor Ian McShane. What? Lovejoy? Lovejoy. Really? Listen to Slave to the Rhythm. There's some talking bits. And then on, all across that album as well, there's, you know, the, this, I think, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Grace Jones and stuff. It's all done by Lovejoy. <sighs> now, the, the backstory to this is that Trevor Horn, the producer who, who masterminded Slave to the Rhythm, was in the studio in Notting Hill in Sarm West and um, popped out to get some dinner to the local fish and chip shop. And Ian McShane was sitting in there having fish and chips with his wife. And Trevor Hall just went over and went, um, would you mind coming to the studio when you finished your dinner and doing some, doing some spoken word bits for my new record? What? 
I, and he, apparently the line he said was, um, I'll use you because Orson Welles is dead. Wow. And that was that. And, and Ian McShane went, all right, I'll be round in a see, minute. See, we went and did it. We're, yeah. it, it uh, unfortunately, it's ageing us, the fact that we're referring to him as Lovejoy rather than, like, Winston from John Wick. <laughs> yes. But, um, <laughs> or um, Deadwood as well. He was in, he was in Deadwood, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. Or was he in Pirates of yeah. the Caribbean, or did I just make that bit up? <laughs> yes, I think he was. And he was in um, Game of Thrones as well. Yeah, I've still never seen an episode of that. Oh, don't worry about no, it. I'm a um, bit late I, now. I think he was the one who infamously, when asked about Game of Thrones, went, it's just tits and dragons. Well, that's why I feel like I should be watching it um, over winter, <laughs> but I'm just to see if I get around to it. It is quite saucy. I mean, I do remember once I was watching it with my wife and she just went, imagine telling your parents you've got an acting gig on TV and when they tune in, you're just entirely naked for all of it, which is what some people are. You know, they just sort of get these cameo roles where they're just required to sort of saunter about in the nip for a bit and it's uh i'd be fine with that yeah. if i was if it was cold weather and i was a lady but not not if i was a man but this is another completely different this is definitely not talking about cars i'm pretty sure game of thrones predates cars doesn't it there's no cars in games of thrones games of thrones <laughs> games doesn't it happen in a parallel universe? what about if they I got they got the apostrophes all wrong so it's games is of thrones is or uh <laughs> Games is uh, Thrones. <laughs> Game, Game of Thrones. It's the, it was titled by listen, someone who writes on those boards outside Green Rose. Yeah, shops. listen, mate. It's the it's the like if the if the if the games is owned by the Thrones. Yeah, do, do you see what I mean? So, like that, like, have you ever seen those steakhouses in <laughs> steakhouses in America called Ruth's Chris Steakhouses? No. It's like, it's an incredibly confusing name. Ruth Steaks, what? Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. And you go, Ruth has a Chris Steakhouse. What's a Chris Steakhouse? Why does Ruth have one of those? Are they a couple, Ruth it's, and Chris? It's nutterly strange. Um, no, I don't know. This is, I don't know, but every time I see one, I go, what the effing shit is going on This here? is a, I think we've been ending this podcast for nine minutes that's a record oh, no. for us, I think. <laughs> right, look, let's stop this because uh, we're, we're more than time to do that. Um, oh, thank you. So, I can keep talking. Thank you, everyone who bought tickets for the live show on the 7th of December. It is sold out. It's sold out, in fact, um, the morning the new podcast came out. So thank you to everyone who's got a ticket there. We will see you um, in just under uh, a month. I can't believe it. I can't believe how quickly it sold out. So thanks to everybody. And thanks to everyone that, that is a patron of this channel. Of course. Yes, yes. Um, and of course, we will do this all again next week. But until then, goodbye. Bye. Mugs, t shirts, stickers. Mugs, t shirts, stickers. Mugs, t shirts, stickers. We might do hats soon. We haven't decided. This may come as a surprise. But Smith and Smith have merchandise. You won't believe your eyes. Smith and Smith have merchandise. Sadly, we don't do pies. But Smith and Smith have merchandise. One day we might sell ties. Smith and Smith have merchandise. Um, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah.